beginner com comedians. At the end of the show, we've got Mike Betancourt coming down and he's regular at the improv, he's doing so well, and he's going to give you a big treat, he's going to knock your socks off. So there's no heckling because these guys have just started doing comedy and it's a lot harder than it looks. So uh, thank you for coming and supporting me. My good friend Adrian Vizcarra, yeah! How's everyone doing tonight? Uh, I'm, I'm having an awesome day today. I had a great day at work today. Uh, see, I'm a first generation Mexican American and I haven't had a, tr a tough time growing up because my dad was raising me on uh, Mexican uh, values, Mexican traditional values. So there's three types of Mex Mexican dads. You have the, the party dad who's always, at who's always at parties, always has a beer in his hand which means the kids always have beers in their too. You have the workaholic dad that always wants to take you to work. So he sits in the morning, he wakes up, come on, kid, come on, you have, you have legs, you can work, come on. It's, we're gonna be late, the sun's coming up, let's go. <laughs> and you have the, the old OG essay dad, you know, the gangster guy, <laughs> who's a, who, who lets the kid do anything. Let's bring up our next comedian. Please welcome Sonny Shahal, yeah! Hey everyone, my name is Sonny. Um, <laughs> <so. laughs> Anyways, you know, just to let you all know and not make you guys play the guessing game of what race I am, I'll just tell you that right now. Um, I'm Indian, East Indian, not Native American. Um, <laughs> okay, I've got to tell you about this next guy. We have so enjoyed having him in class. He is a hoot and a half whether he's doing comedy or not. Please welcome Phil DeLong! Uh, thanks for the introduction. Joni, uh... Okay. I know you're out there. Uh, I'm from around this area. I, uh... Uh, I'm from West Valley, it's Syria. Uh, that's, that's why I go to school here, actually. Um, Institution of Higher Learning, West Valley College, Institution of Higher Learning. All right, now let's bring up Greg Raymer, yeah! What's up, guys? Let's keep it going for Joni. Isn't Joni doing a great job tonight? Before I get started, I've been asked to make an announcement. Uh, if anybody of you wanted to talk to Joni outside about what you've seen here tonight, we ask that you keep it brief. If she's not back in the Shire by midnight, Bilbo gets really pissed. <laughs> it's 
speaking of pissed, uh, we were told to dress up tonight. I'll talk to you after. West Valley College, it's good to be back. I'm a local guy, went to uh, high school right down the road. West Mott, West Mott. Uh, came here as a freshman in 1985. Yes, people do the math, I am old. Came here, <clears throat> and I realized that I spent more time at the beach in Capitola and Santa Cruz than I did in class. At the end of my first year, I had a .3 GPA. Does anybody know what happens when you get a .3 GPA at West Valley College? You get a letter from the admissions office telling you that you have to petition the president of the campus in order to enroll in classes for the fall. I was pissed. I go into this guy's office. I throw open the door. I walk up to his desk and I say, hey, I work at Taco Bell. My tax money supports this institution. I pay my tuition. If I fail every class, what do you care? And I started getting really pissed, so I grabbed his desk and I flipped his desk over. I said, now let me back in. Okay, it didn't really go like that. <laughs> A little something like this. This guy's bald, he's overweight, and he's old. I can totally take this guy. <laughs> so I leave. I gotta plot my next move. I hop in a car and I drive home. Which is odd because I remember riding my 10 speed to school that day. Okay, so I plan, I have a .3 GPA, I'm on academic dismissal, and I've had a few beers, so this is a great plan I've come up with. I'm gonna wait it out. He's got 30, 35 years on me, the guy's gotta die soon, right? I'll just wait, he dies, I'm back in school. I just enrolled in West Valley this semester. 21 years I had to wait. This fool hung on. But, but there's, a, there's a happy ending to the story. This guy's in a retirement home, he's drooling on himself, he's got Alzheimer's, he thinks he's a waffle iron, and I'm back at West Valley College. So speaking of bestiality... Where's my farm animal lovers? I was standing outside before and I saw some of the sheep and chicken people out there. Where was that one guy that had the feathers all around his mouth? I know you guys are in here. This subject is very near and dear to my heart. And I say near and dear because I am the offspring, the love child, if you will, of one of these love affairs. My father was Kevin Bacon and my mother was a giraffe. You guys ever play the Kevin Bacon game? Six degrees to Kevin Bacon? All the steps for me and my dad go through the San Diego Zoo. No lie. Recently I turned 40. It is not scary anymore. It used to be scary, not scary anymore. There's a magic word out there, and the word is Viagra. You guys ever see the commercials on TV for Viagra? Crazy stuff. You got this guy running in slow motion in the rain and mud. He's got nine of his friends chasing him. He's holding the football. He gets into the end zone and he kills it. Cut to another scene. He's forging a sword with a hammer, smashing it. Flames are going everywhere. Sparks are flying. Then they cut to him in a race car, 200 miles an hour around the track, flying. I get off my sofa, I'm like, go, penis, go! <laughs> but now the crazy part is, guys, listen up. At the end of every one of these commercials, there's this little quiet voice. You gotta pay attention, this is some scary stuff, you hear this. Taking Viagra, if you experience an erection lasting longer than four hours, please see a physician. Side effects could lead to runny bowels, nasal congestion, stomach discomfort, double vision, bladder pain, bloody urine, dizziness, pain with urination, bleeding of the eyes, seizure, and anxiety. Are we still talking about sex or has someone been in a plane crash? I have literally been in car accidents where the car was totaled and I walked away with less than this. I just want to get laid. I don't want to be interrogated by Al-Qaeda. Where are my drinkers out there? What's the deal with people drinking and hearing a song and thinking they're a musician? What is that about? Song comes on, dude next to me breaks out. Why does this not translate to any other occupation? 
where's the guy that drinks the Jack and Cokes all night, right? Dude, I can totally fix your teeth. They're all messed up. <laughs> or the guy that drinks a 12-pack of Heineken. And is like, dude, I'll totally take that hair clog out of the drain in your bathroom. <laughs> what I'm really looking for is tax time. I want the guy that comes up to me drunk at a party. <laughs> dude, if I had a 1040A, I'd totally do your taxes right now. Something exciting. These are hard times. Gas is expensive, movies expensive, dinners are expensive. Cheap entertainment. I've come up with something called a bar grenade. This is something that all of you can try. All my drinkers can try the next time. This guy's already gonna try it. <laughs> bar grenade, follow my example. I go into a bar with a female coworker. We go up to the bar, we sit down, have some drinks, talk to each other, talk to the bartender. We're in there for about an hour. I'm sitting there thinking, hmm, Time for a bar grenade. I have to go to the can. Right before I go to the can, take notes. Right before I go to the can, I lean to the guy next to me and I say, you know this girl right here, right? Her boyfriend just cheated on her. She walked in on him, caught him. She is really pissed. She tells me, the first guy that offers to buy her a drink or asks her to dance, she's gonna take to a hotel and have revenge sex. So I go to the bathroom, come out, and what do I see? This guy is chasing this poor girl all over the bar. <laughs> what happens when you throw a grenade? Shrapnel. Shrapnel is when the tables are turned, and it's their turn to get you, so he's already not, and he already knows. Two hours have gone by, the drunk guy that was annoying her has now been thrown out, and now there's a college girl sitting next to me. I'm chatting her up, trying to do the thing, right? <laughs> Talking to her, I get up to go to the bathroom, she leans in and goes, you know Kevin Bacon's in a bestiality. Thank you, that's my time. Give Greg a big hand, let him know. Funny, funny guy.